Imagine being adrift in an endless sea, no land or boats in sight, no planes in the sky, no other humans within thousands of miles. You're as far from civilization as anyone can possibly be while still on Earth. This place has a name, Point Nemo. And no, it's not named after the little orange clownfish. It comes from the Latin word for no one, a fitting name for the most remote place on the planet. Point Nemo isn't an island or a landmass. It's just ocean. A void in the South Pacific, more than 1,450 nautical miles, or over 2,600 kilometers from any piece of land. The closest humans? They might be astronauts orbiting above in the International Space Station. But don't let its emptiness fool you. Point Nemo is a magnet for secrets. Why do space agencies use it as a cosmic graveyard? Why do ships and planes steer clear? And what mysteries lurk beneath its dark, churning waves? Let's dive into the enigma of Point Nemo. So just how remote is Point Nemo? The three closest landmasses are so obscure, they're barely on anyone's radar. There's Ducey Island, a speck in the Pitcairn Islands. Motu Nui, a tiny islet off Easter Island. And Maher Island, a lonely outcrop near Antarctica. Each one is over 1,450 nautical miles away. Imagine the distance from New York to Houston. But instead of highways and cities, it's just an endless sea of waves. Connect these three points, and you've got what's called the unreachable triangle. A zone of pure isolation. That kind of seclusion sparks a wild question. Can anyone even get to Point Nemo? The short answer Yes. A handful of adventurers have made the treacherous journey, solo sailors pushing their boats to the absolute limits, expedition teams chasing the ultimate challenge of reaching the most remote spot on Earth. Those who have made it battled the cold and wind of the South Pacific and some of the roughest waters on the planet. Massive swells, unpredictable storms, and weeks of sailing through complete nothingness. What might be more interesting, though, is who avoids Point Nemo. Look at global shipping maps, and you'll see commercial vessels steering clear of this area entirely. And it's not just because of the remoteness. Point Nemo sits in the South Pacific Gyre, a massive clockwise circulation system spanning thousands of miles. Think of it as nature's washing machine, but instead of cleaning, it's creating a biological desert. Here's why it's so lifeless. Ocean gyres trap water in the center, cutting it off from the nutrient-rich waters along coastlines. No nutrients flowing in means no phytoplankton, the tiny plants that form the base of the entire ocean food web. Without them, there's nothing to feed the small fish, which means nothing to feed the bigger fish, and so on up the chain. The water here is crystal clear, almost disturbingly so. That clarity isn't beautiful, it's a sign of death. Healthy ocean water is slightly cloudy with life. The South Pacific gyre's water is so nutrient poor that scientists call it an oceanic desert. As clear as distilled water, but emptier than a ghost town. Point Nemo also sits in the notorious Southern Ocean, where weather doesn't just change, it attacks. This is where the Roaring Forties, Furious Fifties, and Screaming Sixties latitudes earn their terrifying names. With no landmasses to break them up, winds here circle the globe uninterrupted, building into some of the most ferocious storms on Earth. Waves can tower 50 feet high. Imagine a five-story building of water bearing down on you. The average wave height here is consistently over 12 feet, even on calm days. Temperatures hover just above freezing year-round, and the combination of wind and spray creates a bone-chilling environment that can kill through a hypothermia in minutes. Put simply, the risks of sailing through Point Nemo far outweigh any benefits. Same with aircraft. 
flights from New Zealand to Chile would rather skirt the Antarctic coastline than risk a mid-ocean emergency with no land for thousands of miles. Pilots call areas like Point Nemo, Coffin Corners, places where a mechanical failure or medical emergency becomes a death sentence. Commercial aviation follows strict rules about how far planes can fly from suitable airports, known as ETOPS regulations. Engines turn, or people swim, as pilots grimly joke. Point Nemo violates every safety protocol. If an engine fails or someone has a heart attack, the nearest runway is over four hours away at maximum speed. That's assuming perfect conditions and a plane that's still controllable. In reality, emergency landings require immediate options. Airports within 60 to 180 minutes, depending on the aircraft. So flight paths curve around Point Nemo like it's radioactive. Routes from New Zealand to South America cling to remote coastlines and skirt small islands for a little extra security. Yet there is one group that doesn't avoid Point Nemo. In fact, they target it deliberately to them, Point Nemo is a giant bullseye and the perfect cosmic dump. Space agencies like NASA and Roscosmos aim for Point Nemo when their satellites, space stations or rocket parts reach the end of their lives. Why? It's so far from civilization that a crash landing here won't harm a soul. The most famous resident of Point Nemo's depths is Russia's Mir space station. 165 tons of humanity's greatest space achievement deliberately crashed here in 2001 after 15 years in orbit. Mir didn't go quietly. As it plunged through the atmosphere, it broke apart in a spectacular fireworks display, scattering debris across hundreds of square miles of ocean floor. But Mir is just the celebrity headliner in a graveyard full of space history. Over 260 spacecraft call these depths home, including chunks of the International Space Station that have been periodically deorbited, cargo vessels like the European Space Agency's automated transfer vehicles, and Russia's Progress supply ships. Japan's HTV cargo craft and SpaceX's Dragon capsules have also made the final plunge here. Some of the most intriguing residents are the early Soviet satellites and probes from the 1970s and 80s, Cold War space technology that was cutting edge for its time, now resting in complete darkness miles below the surface. What classified experiments or advanced tech went down with them? We'll never know, because at those crushing depths, over 400 times the atmospheric pressure at sea level, even the most advanced submersibles can't reach them. Each crash adds to Point Nemo's collection, creating what might be the most expensive underwater museum in the world. Except no one will ever visit it. These sunken machines rest in absolute silence, surrounded by the crushing darkness of the deep ocean. But silence, it turns out, might be relative. Because Point Nemo has been anything but quiet. In 1997, Underwater microphones positioned thousands of miles apart picked up something extraordinary. A sound so loud it could be heard across the entire Pacific Ocean. Scientists called it the bloop, and it was unlike anything they'd ever recorded. Louder than a blue whale, deeper than any known marine life, and coming from the general direction of Point Nemo. What was it? The boring answer says it's just massive ice shelves off Antarctica cracking and shifting. But some dreamers, yes, even scientists, wonder, could it be something else? A massive creature lurking in the abyss? Or maybe forgotten tech from a sunken spacecraft, humming in the dark? Let's be real, sea monsters are a stretch, but Point Nemo's isolation makes it the perfect place for secrets. Its depths are a black box, no divers, no subs, no cameras have explored the cosmic graveyard down there. Could some of that tech still be active? Leaking signals? Or hiding classified experiments no one was meant to find? In a world where every corner seems mapped and explored, Point Nemo reminds us that mystery still exists. 
Somewhere beneath those dark waters, billions of dollars in space technology rests alongside unanswered questions. The bloop may have been explained, but the depths themselves remain as unknowable as ever. As climate change reshapes ocean currents and space agencies continue their cosmic burials, Point Nemo will keep evolving. A graveyard, a mystery, and a monument to human curiosity all at once. The most remote place on Earth isn't empty at all. It's full of stories we're only beginning to understand. What other secrets might be sleeping in the deep? That's a mystery for another day. If you loved diving into the enigma of Point Nemo, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss our next journey into the unknown. What remote mystery should we explore next? Let us know in the comments below.